And right now, fast and soon free, we'll explain who will pay for those rapid at-home COVID tests and what you need to know before you go buy a bunch. Also, a company claiming to do free COVID tests in Madison and around the country is closing to retrain its staff after a mountain of complaints. And facing dozens of new charges, the man accused of killing six and injuring many more in the Waukesha Christmas Parade. Here's some of the evidence police have against him. You're watching News 3 Now at 5. Well, we're escaping the worst of it in Madison, but much of southern and southwestern Wisconsin is getting snow right now, which is making the roads pretty slick. That's triggered an alert day for us, especially our viewers closer to the Mississippi River. So how much can we expect? Chief Meteorologist Gary Canalti joins us now from the weather patio. Gary? Well, Susan, it's not so much how much snow we get. It's the fact that it's a very fine powdery snow that can be blown around by brisk winds. And also with temperatures in the teens, the salt doesn't work as well and the roads get slippery. You can see the heaviest snow by far and the steadiest snow has been across parts of Iowa and uh, Minnesota, uh, but far southwestern Wisconsin getting some steady snow and then the snow lighter in intensity as you head eastward toward Madison. In fact, visibility is right now about 10 miles in Madison, just very light snow falling, whereas close to the Mississippi River, we're seeing visibilities between about a mile and two miles, three quarters of a mile visibility right now in La Crosse. Additional snowfall of about one to two inches possible near the Mississippi River, less than an inch south and west of Dane County and from Madison on toward the north and east. I don't think we'll have much in the way of additional accumulation, but we do have that alert day in the forecast for the uh, snow tapering to flurries, the uh, accumulating snow blowing around a bit, and also uh, the cold temperatures uh, making salt uh, not less effective. Right now, 16 in Madison, temperatures in the 20s to the south, but already in the lower teens up to the north. By tomorrow morning, we'll be down to around 11 degrees with the snow ending overnight. Tomorrow will be a very cold day with a high temperature of only 18. Looks like we'll see a brief warm up early next week, but even more cold air, colder air is uh, on the way for the end of next week. I'll have more on that in the forecast in a few minutes. All right, we'll see you then. Thank you, Gary. Those at-home COVID tests everybody scrambled out to buy should be free starting soon. The Biden administration ordered insurance companies to cover the costs. There's a lot to unpack here, so Brad Hamilton is going to help us sort it all out. Brad? Susan and Mark, insurance companies will have to start covering the cost for at-home testing starting tomorrow, but there are limitations to this new policy. First, you are covered for eight rapid tests a month per person. However, the test will only be covered for diagnostic reasons, meaning if you've been experiencing or feel COVID symptoms. This policy does not cover someone who might have to get who have to, who has to get tested weekly or daily for work. An official we spoke with said getting reimbursed will most likely be different for each provider. Making sure people get keep their receipts, any documentation, you know, if it's something you ordered online, make sure it doesn't send that receipt email to your spam box. Make sure you keep track of all those records so that you can get reimbursed and, and file for the reimbursement right away. Smith also says uh, there are options to get your home testing taken care of uh, up front at a pharmacy, but that will depend on whether or not your insurance company has a partnership with your local pharmacy. This new policy shouldn't just benefit your wallet at six. We'll hear how hospitals are strongly in favor of it. We will see you at six. Brad, thank you. A company claiming to provide free COVID tests facing a mounting list of complaints says it is shutting down. The Center for COVID Control says it will shut down for a week to retrain its staff. The company is based in Illinois, but has a few pop-up locations in the Madison area. The Better Business Bureau says multiple people have reported not receiving test results, poor customer service, and that the company requested personal information like driver's licenses and insurance information in order to get a test. In a press release yesterday, the company blamed the poor customer service on the high demand for testing. Well, most states, including Wisconsin, are calling in the military to join the fight against COVID. Michael George tells us the nation is still recording nearly 800,000 new cases a day. Washington became the latest state to summon its National Guard to help hospitals overwhelmed by COVID-19. Emergency rooms are full. 
More people are showing up all the time. We want to help hospitals handle the volume of patients. Members of the armed forces are being called up across the country as the Omicron-fueled outbreak continues to spread. The most critical need right now is medical staffing for our hospitals. Today, the White House said FEMA would cover the costs of the deployments. I am now directing an expansion of our FEMA policy to permit funding to states who elect to use their National Guard troops to fill these critical support roles in hospitals. Healthcare workers aren't alone on the pandemic's front lines. Here in New York City, schools are drawing up plans for a possible return to remote learning. Many students have already stopped going to classes. Citywide attendance numbers show nearly one in four stayed home on Thursday. At one school, less than half of them showed up. I just want my, can, my child to have a normal childhood back. In Philadelphia, over 100 schools have switched to online teaching because so many teachers and staff are either sick or in quarantine because of COVID-19. Michael George, CBS News, New York. And the U.S. is now reporting more than twice as many new COVID cases daily compared to vaccinations. CVS and Walgreens are shutting down some pharmacies on weekends due to COVID and staffing issues. Walgreens says the majority of its stores will stay open and operate with normal business hours. It plans to select days with the lowest prescription demand to minimize disruption for customers. CVS says only a fraction of stores will temporarily close on one or both days of the weekend. It's unclear whether stores in the Madison area are on that list. A court commissioner decided a mill Milwaukee man accused of driving his SUV through a Christmas parade will stand trial. Daryl Brooks was in court today for the hearing. He's facing 77 charges, including multiple counts of first degree intentional homicide. Six people were killed in the Waukesha parade incident in November and dozens were injured. Today, court commissioner Kevin Costello said there is enough evidence against Brooks for the case to go to trial. Brooks faces life Life in prison if convicted. He will be back in court next month. You can find more information on this case at channel3000.com. The trial of Chandler Halderson is set to resume Tuesday after a delay prompted by the defendant's COVID diagnosis. Judge John Highland issued an order today stating that the trial will resume because the quarantine periods will have passed. And as of right now, no one else in the court has developed COVID symptoms. Experts say the defense could have asked for a mistrial, but Halderson's defense team indicated he did not want to pursue a mistrial. Flags returned to half staff today in honor of Mineral Point Fire Captain Brian Bush. Bush was laid to rest this afternoon. The 43-year-old firefighter, a 43-year-old and firefighter James Ludlum were killed in a crash last week while responding to another crash. A visitation for Bush was held this morning followed by a mass at St. Mary's and St. Paul's Catholic Church. A funeral for Ludlam was held on Wednesday. The Wisconsin Department of Military Affairs announced today that a new commander has been installed at Volk Field. Colonel Matthew Eakins is the 13th commander in Volk's Field's history. His 21-year military career includes command of the 115th Mission Support Group at Truax Field. The previous leader, Colonel Leslie Ziza Martin, was removed as commander after serving just one year on the job. Investigations revealed alleged misconduct and concerns about the work environment while she was in charge. Well, good news for Paisons fans. The city of Madison says the building housing the restaurant on West Wilson Street can safely reopen. Inspectors notified the building's owners this morning. Paisons opened at 3 this afternoon for limited in-person dining and takeout with a smaller menu. The city says it will continue to work with the owner of the building to make sure proper monitoring and safety precautions continue. However, more permanent steps still need to be taken to repair the building. New at 5, the Rock County District Attorney has concluded Included that a Beloit police officer who shot a man who allegedly tried reaching for her gun acted appropriately. The DA released a statement this afternoon saying 29-year-old Jorge Batista Almaraz was, quote, shot as a direct result of his own actions. He was shot following an altercation during a welfare check last month. The officer involved is still on administrative leave. Batista Almaraz is facing charges and will be in court 
on the 26th. In this week's Eye on Education, we're checking out a program you don't see too often anymore. It's giving students a hands-on experience in a field where employers are desperate for workers. Chris Stanford has the details in today's Eye on Education. Gotta be careful with the wind today. It's the start of the workday for Chris Prawl. Any questions along the way, let me know. Licensed contractor, licensed teacher. It's a different type of homeschool. The crew is made up of Oregon high schoolers building a house. It's a good experience and it helps that I actually wake up wanting to come in. They shadow trained professionals and do a lot of the work themselves. Students like Ariel Carlos are here from start to finish. I'm putting up drywall in the ceiling. For me, I mean, I just like seeing how it starts and then once you're done, you just sit back and look at the finished product and then it just feels better at the end of the day because you can see what you did. <laughs> After graduation, they should easily be able to find a job. The demand for skilled labor is sky high. We've been, you know, struggling with a lack of young people. Kevin Ponder works for People Ready Skilled Trades, which tracks job openings online. Their data shows skilled labor demand is up 85% in Wisconsin since last year. The most in-demand trade jobs are electricians, carpenters, plumbers, and painters. You're interviewing the company as much as being interviewed by the company. There's a tremendous opportunity for people looking that, that enjoy working with their hands, that enjoy being outside, they enjoy building something that they can look at and notice there 20, 30 years later. You got your piece, Blake? Pearl says about half of his students will end up in the trades right out of school. I hope that when they leave here, they'll at least have some base knowledge and use it for whatever they decide to go on to in the future and it helps them become a better person. Building skills for in-demand careers. Looks good. It's like not even school. I like feel like it's fun. And Ponder with People Ready says pay typically starts at $15 an hour, but after four years with certified training, skilled workers could make about $70,000 a year. What a great program. Yeah. Up next at 5, a House committee continues to investigate the January 6th attack on the U.S. Capitol. Coming up, we take a closer look at the committee's most serious charge against a man who helped plan the attack. And later, we'll break down which types of masks are better suited suited to protect you from COVID. We'll have those details at six. It was a mixed day on Wall Street to end the work week. The Dow closed down 201 points. The NASDAQ was up almost 87 and the S&P 500 was up almost four points. We'll be right back. Furniture and Appliance Mart's multi-million dollar clearance event is on now. Save up to half off appliance clearance items while they last. Plus, no interest financing for 12 months on all appliances with no minimum purchase. At Furniture and Appliance Mart, inside Ashley Home Store off the Beltline. How much money have you wasted trying to find the right shade of foundation to match your skin tone? You end up with so many unused bottles, yet you can't bear to throw them out. Now, there's Color Beauty self-adjusting foundation, which means you'll never search for the perfect shade again. It's really difficult for me to find a good tone foundation. I usually purchase about three or four and sometimes mix them. Color Beauty is a game changer in finding the right foundation. You put it on your skin and it transforms into your own skin tone. The Color Beauty Foundation is so simple to put on. My skin looks great and it just looks awesome. The key to the innovative Color Beauty formula is tiny color beads that release and blend to perfectly match your skin tone as you apply it. The foundation is white when it comes out of the bottle, but when I begin to apply it, it adjusts to blend perfectly with the color of my skin. My biggest problem area is my cheeks right here. Color Beauty feels really light on my skin and I can tell that it is pretty full coverage so it looks like I don't have too much foundation on but it is covering all my acne scars like I was saying before. I actually really love it. It's weightless and it's full coverage and also it literally just matches my skin as soon as I put it on. It's no work. I've never experienced a foundation like this. Color Beauty only comes in two colors, light and medium. If you have fair skin or you burn easily, go with the light. If you have darker skin, 
skin, go with the medium. Plus, with an SPF of 50, they're getting the highest level of sun protection in a lightweight formula. And best of all is Color Beauty's exclusive special. Order this New Year's and get 40% off. That means you'll get the color adjusting foundation, the skin smoothing primer, and the fan favorite lash enhancer for thicker, longer looking lashes at 40% off. Plus, get free shipping. Visit color40.com or call the number on your screen. It's here, Wisconsin. Ashley Home Store's mega clearance event is on now. Millions of dollars worth of in-stock clearance, floor sample, and special purchase furniture and mattresses must be sold. This is your chance to save as much as 85% off while it lasts. Plus, no interest financing for three years store-wide. Only at Ashley Home Store. At home, COVID test reimbursements. That's the latest from Washington. Tonight at 6, when will they be available and how will they work? We're searching for the answers. And a Mineral Point firefighter was laid to rest today. How loved ones are honoring him. Coming up at 6. News 3 Now and St. Vincent de Paul are collecting new and gently used blankets for our neighbors in need. You can drop them off at any Dane County St. Vincent de Paul store or participating area churches the last weekend in January. Thank you for your generosity. You're watching News 3 Now at 5. Well, breaking right now, fire crews responding to a report of a fire in the 1500 block of Williams Drive in Stoughton. This is a live look from the scene. Dane County Dispatch says no injuries have been recorded. reported. That is, you can follow up the latest details on this story on channel3000.com. The government has filed its most serious charges to date against the men it says helped organize the January 6th attack on the U.S. Capitol. Skylar Henry takes a closer look at those charges. Stuart Rhodes was scheduled to make his first court appearance Friday afternoon on charges of seditious conspiracy for his role in the January 6th Capitol assault. Sedition in this case, when you're talking about an act of violence in an attempt to overthrow a government by stopping the election of the president, uh, I think it fits. The government accuses Rhodes of using encrypted messages to organize the January 6th assault, including this message to his leader saying, we aren't getting through this without a civil war. On that day, the government claims Rhodes allegedly directed Oath Keepers to march on the Capitol in two stack formations to breach the building. Once inside, the charging documents allege one team headed toward the Senate chamber, while a second team went in search of House Speaker Nancy Pelosi. Rhodes' civil attorney says his client never entered the Capitol. I don't believe that any of these charges can be proven at trial. I think they were dumb to go to the Capitol. I mean, he's like, he's like I didn't go to the Capitol because I'm not... You know, I'm not dumb. I'm not going to do that. As the leader of one extremist group is going behind bars, the leader of another extremist group has been set free. Henry Enrique Tario was released from jail in Washington, D.C. Friday morning. He was arrested two days prior to January 6th, then served four months in jail for setting fire to a Black Lives Matter banner. I might take a step away from leadership. Uh, right now from the Proud Boys organization. I plan to comply with the January 6th committee Are to the best of my abilities. At least 37 members of the Proud Boys have been arrested and charged for their actions on January 6th. Skyler Henry, CBS News, Capitol Hill. And the Congressional Committee investigating the January 6th assault has already issued a subpoena for Tario to give testimony. Well, this weekend marks the anniversary of the most famous emergency landing in modern aviation history. Tomorrow will be 13 years since the miracle on the Hudson took place. On January 15th, 2009, Captain Chesley Sully Sullenberger was flying a U.S. Airways flight when it was damaged after hitting a flock of birds. Sullen Sullenberger went on to do what many consider to be impossible. He successfully landed the plane in the Hudson River. 155 people were evacuated from the plane and rescued by boat. Those pictures are still remarkable 13 years later. Well, let's get a look now to your certified most accurate weather forecast. Chief Meteorologist Gary Canalti. What's going on out there, Gary? Well, we put an alert day in the forecast for tonight. Uh, it's not so much for the amount of snow. It's just the fact the temperatures now are in the middle to upper teens. The wind is blowing around. It's a fine powdery snow. Most of the heavier accumulations are still well west of Madison near the Mississippi River. Uh, at this point, uh, areas north and east of Madison will see little in the way of additional accumulation in areas west of Madison. 
and may see some minor additional accumulation. Snowfall so far, the heaviest total I could find, at least in uh, western Wisconsin, was 2.5 inches in Norwalk. That's in Monroe County up toward uh, Toma and La Crosse. Uh, Vernon County, Stoddard had 1.7 inches. Cassville in the western portion of Grant County, 1.7 inches. Uh, Lancaster about an inch. Here at the station, just a little more than a half inch. And uh, the airport as of about 3 p.m. reported three tenths of an inch. And I'm not expecting those totals to go up dramatically, especially for Madison eastward. Notice, even with light snow falling, visibility here in Madison is at 10 miles. So you can see just how light and powdery and fine that snow is. Whereas farther out to the west, the visibilities drop off to about a mile to two miles. La Crosse and Decorah, Iowa, still reporting three quarters of a mile visibility and light to moderate snow. Doppler track shows the snow uh, kind of moving in, but again, it's running into that dry air. So the eastern edge of the snow is eroding. Sometimes it moves eastward a little bit, and then it kind of falls back. Whereas out to the west, across Minnesota and Iowa, pretty much what we've been expecting, steady to of uh, moderate to occasionally heavy snow there. Uh, additional snowfall, this is through Saturday afternoon. You can see very little across most of southern Wisconsin, maybe a couple of inches down toward Dubuque, Iowa, maybe far western Grant County. And then still an additional uh, several inches to maybe as much as a half a foot in parts of Iowa. Winter storm warnings remain in effect from southwestern Minnesota through central Iowa. Winter weather advisories have been expanded into the counties just east of the Mississippi River, including Crawford and Grant counties of our viewing area. So you can see the snow depth starting to fill in. This area of Iowa yesterday didn't have any snow on the ground. That area will continue to fill in, but look what happens where the snow goes after that. Okay, the snow winds down a little bit, and then the storm reforms and then heads northeastward. And look at the snow expected over the next few days into uh, much of the mid-Atlantic states and parts of New England. That area under winter storm watch is basically from northern portions of Arkansas all the way up into Maine. So that shows you where the storm is headed. But for us now, we're on the backside of the storm. The cold air will start pouring in and temperatures tomorrow probably won't get out of the upper teens. So winter weather advisories in effect until 3 a.m. tomorrow morning for Crawford and Grand counties. Look for the snow to taper to flurries and end overnight with a low temperature of about 11. And then for tomorrow, look for a high of only 18 degrees with variably cloudy skies. Future track shows the snow winding down overnight. And then you can see tomorrow some breaks in the clouds. Tomorrow night, temperatures drop off a little bit into the uh, teen, uh, single digits and then start rising. And then on Sunday, we see some snow showers in the afternoon with high temperatures in the lower to middle 20s. Again, additional snowfall, maybe an inch or two over Grant County. 7 to 10 day forecast. You can see those temperatures turning very cold again for the end of next week. Some days we'll see wind chills down to about 10 to 20 below zero. As we check out first warm traffic, of course, with the snow on the roads, there's the uh, live view from uh, the uh, DOT camera at uh, Verona Road and Raymond Road. Uh, traffic moving steadily, but the roads are getting slippery. We're seeing some slow spots on the Beltline, but traffic is pretty light. So right now, just slightly elevated travel times on the Beltline in either direction. Heading out of Madison, not a problem on I-3990 down to Janesville. Just a little bit of an elevation in times out to Sauk City on US-12 and to Sun Prairie on East Washington Avenue and US-151. That's your news for now, First Warren Traffic. All right, Gary, thank you. Coming up next, 2021 saw some of the warmest temperatures on record. We'll take a closer look after the break. Warm weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. Guys, do you suffer from erectile dysfunction? Now there's great news. Peak Performance for Men will help you regain your performance and confidence naturally. Peak Performance for Men uses an advanced form of acoustic wave therapy, clinically shown to open up and regrow blood vessels, restoring normal and natural function ability where it counts most. There are no needles, no surgery, and best of all, no pain. Call now and receive an ultrasound. Your initial consultation, all for free, in over $300 value. Call Peak Performance for Men today. Living with metastatic breast cancer means being relentless because every day matters. And having more of them is possible with Fresenio, the only one of its kind proven to help you live significantly longer when taken with fulvestrant, regardless of menopause status. Fresenio plus fulvestrant is for HR positive, HER2 negative metastatic breast cancer that has progressed after hormone therapy. Diarrhea is common, may be severe, or cause dehydration or infection. At the first sign, call your doctor, start an antidiarrheal, and drink fluids. Before taking Fresenio, Tell your doctor about any fever, chills, or other signs of infection. Fresenio may cause low white blood cell counts, which may cause serious infection that can lead to death. Life-threatening lung inflammation can occur. Tell your doctor about any new or worsening trouble breathing, cough, or chest pain. Serious liver problems can happen. Symptoms include fatigue, appetite loss, stomach pain, and bleeding or bruising. Blood clots that can lead to death have occurred. Tell your doctor if you have pain or swelling in your arms or legs, shortness of breath, chest pain, and rapid breathing or heart rate, or if you are nursing.
nursing pregnant or plan to be. Every day matters, and I want more of them. Ask your doctor about every day for Zenio. Start the new year off right with Menards Bag Sale. Pick up a bag in store and get 15% off everything you can fit in the bag now through January 15th. Whether you pack it, load it, stuff it, or stack it. From light bulbs to tools, snacks, and much more, fit it in the bag and save 15%. So, pick up a bag in store and find out how much you fit in the bag. Now, through January 15th. Save big money at Menards. At the Burrish Group at UBS, we believe in empowering women to take control of their financial security. With a team of female advisors who understand the needs and goals of women. We believe you can achieve anything you put your mind to and can help you stay ahead of life's expected and unexpected events. Give our team a call today to start the conversation. From defunding the police to not prosecuting criminals, Democrat policies are disastrous for America. When I ran in 2016, I intended to serve a second term. Watching News 3 Now at 5. While millions brace for winter weather this weekend, last summer's intense heat waves may seem like a distant memory. Karen Kafa takes a look back at some of the most extreme weather phenomena of 2021. From the North Star State to the Lone Star. The Big Apple to the Big Easy. 2021 was marked by weather extremes across the U.S. New reports from NOAA and NASA released this week reveal last year was the sixth hottest on record. Global warming is no longer an academic issue. The evidence of rising global temperatures witnessed throughout the country. This level of global warming uh, is impacting uh, weather and extremes at a local level. The report from NOAA documents 20 separate billion dollar plus disasters in the U.S. that resulted in 688 lives lost and total at least $145 billion in damage. It's taking a huge toll, both human and economic. But many experts say the true costs extend far beyond those estimates. We know that the deaths from extreme weather and climate related events don't always fall within this category of billion dollar plus. And the impact is widespread. A Washington Post analysis found more than 40% of Americans live in counties struck by 2021's weather disasters, and more than 80% of Americans experienced a heat wave. Climate change is here, it's all around us, it's affecting everybody's lives all over the country. While it's unclear what 2022 has in store, scientists say more severe and more costly climate events lie ahead. We are going to see more and more intense rainfall. We are going to see more and deeper heat waves. Uh, it won't necessarily, we can't predict where they will be, uh, but, but we can predict that they will happen. In Washington, I'm Karen Kafa. And we'll have a final check of your first warm forecast when we come back. you remodel, don't toss your cabinets and appliances. Donate to Habitat Restore. Give your items a second life while proceeds build Habitat for Humanity homes. Donate today. Habitat Restore, Dane County. So here's what we won't do. We won't let self-doubt win again. Because together, Come on, Riley, we're working on something more real. Elbows in. With a real plan and coach for real 360 support. That's Anytime Fitness. That's Real AF. Oh my gosh, wow, who am I? Wow, is that really me? <laughs> Hi, I'm Annette and I'm an actress. Under eye bags and wrinkles are so frustrating. They're so hard to hide and so hard to get rid of. I came across Plexiderm and I was so excited. We have a model, his name is Richie, and all he's doing is taking a small amount. It's so powerful, that's all it takes. This new year, in just 10 minutes, you'll look incredible. This is something that you can do in the convenience of your own home. It's a cream, it's a topical, it literally creates an invisible layer 
that tightens the skin and smooths it out. All you do is gently rub it underneath your eyes on your fine lines and wrinkles and it visibly disappears in as little as 10 minutes. My real true opinion is holy words I can't say on camera. <laughs> this is absolutely unbelievable. I mean, I could feel it just lifting my skin. It was amazing. It feels good. It feels great. Looks even better. I can't even believe that this worked. I was a little skeptical. I am not going to lie because I saw people online with it. I'm like, yeah, right. That can't possibly work. I'm telling you, it really works. I thought I might see a little difference, but to see that big of a difference and, you know, I felt something happening, but I had no idea. Like, I have so many dark circles. I have the puffiness. I have the lines. Like, it's amazing. I love it. <laughs> I did this to my father at home because I was skeptical. Yes, I admit it. Four minutes, 34 seconds. The appearance of his under eye bag was completely gone. We were screaming. You have an event. You have any of those moments where you want to feel the best about yourself. I am telling you, the videos that you see on social media and TV are real. This New Year is the best time to get Plexiderm for only $14.95 and see it work for yourself after your first application. Your solution is at PlexidermTrial.com or call the number on your screen. Just two pills for all day pain relief. Aleve it and see what's possible. And also try Aleve X topical pain relief. Is your credit score getting in the way of things you want to do? Personal loans through NetCredit help you borrow up to $10,000. So check your eligibility on netcredit.com today without affecting your credit score. You may even be able to build your credit history as you repay. NetCredit, a more personal, personal loan. Well, it may be time to dust off that old comic collection you have in the attic. This comic book sold for $3.18 million, making it the third most expensive comic of all time. Action Comics number one was auctioned off yesterday. Released in 1938, it features the first appearance of Superman. Meanwhile, a single page of this Spider-Man comic book sold for over $3 million. The page was the original artwork by Mike Zeck and shows Spider-Man with a black costume for the first time. That's some big cash. Yeah. All right, Gary, any old comic books up in the attic? Maybe some Bazooka Joe uh, <laughs> <laughs> cartoons safe somewhere in the corner. Might be worth something. Yeah, well, very little, I'm sure. Uh, hopefully the snow amounts to very little. Most of that will be near the Mississippi River. You can see visibilities, though, still down to around a mile in Viroqua, but uh, here in Madison, the snow's lightened up quite a bit. All right, Gary, thank you. Have a good weekend, everybody. Mark, thanks for your help. You're welcome. The CBS Evening News is coming up next.